Hey guys, Max here. We just got in the new unit from Blue Eddy, the AC500. I've got right here the AC300. This is the predecessor of the AC500. So we're gonna compare, go through some of the differences, the ports, what they can do. Later on, we'll have a much more in-depth video of the AC500 as well as the AC300. We're gonna put them to kind of head to head and decide which one makes more sense for you. Stick around, today's video, we're just gonna go through the differences between the AC500 and the AC300. First things first, you might be looking at these and thinking they look awfully the same size. One has a 5,000 watt inverter, one has a 3,000 watt inverter, but actually in fact they take up the exact same footprint. So it's pretty cool if you already have a place built out for the AC300, this AC500 will fit in the exact same footprint that you already have. I haven't actually weighed them and I will throw up the official weights uh, on the screen here, but the AC300, pretty easy to lift up. Oh, the AC500 is significantly heavier, or at least feels significantly heavier to me, trying to lift them up. So that's clearly where the difference is in here. The 5,000 watt inverter and the other circuitry, it affects weight, not the overall footprint. Let's quickly go over the ports and the differences between the AC300 and the AC500. These units are basically carbon copies of each other. So if you've already gotten used to how the AC300 works, you'll have a very easy time with the AC500 as well. So in the top left here, we've got DC output, and it's really only some styling differences here where they've put lines individually around these two outputs, where there's a single line going around everything on the AC300. On both units at the top left, you've got your 12 volt 30 amp dc output so that's really cool and a 24 volt 10 amp output it's the same on both it gives you a lot of flexibility 12 volts or 24 volts out at dc that's really cool the difference here on the top right on your ac 500 you've got two quick charging usb c's where on the ac 300 you only have one and then for the standard usb the old school you have four two and two two and two it's the same on the ac 300 and the ac 500. the main difference with these units is when we come down to the bottom on the front of the units the ac outputs ac 300 gets its name from the 3000 watt inverter so they just cut off a zero there ac 300 and the ac 500 gets its name obviously from a 5,000 watt inverter. They cut off a zero there. The big difference now between a 3,000 watt and a 5,000 watt is that we're able to get a 50 amp output. That's huge and we'll get into that in just a second. So if we look at the AC300, it has one, two, three, four, five, six 20 amp standard household plugs here. Comes with six of them nicely spread out as well. It also comes with a 30 amp plug on the front. This is great for campers and RVs, vans, those type of things where you just want to be able to plug in and go. With the AC500, we've got only three of the 20 amp outlets, nicely spaced out as well with the protective coverings. The big difference here is that there's two 30 amp outlets. So if we open these up, we can see one is the regular, this generally, if you have a transfer switch at your house, you'll recognize this outlet right here. That's where you plug it in and twist it to lock it in. That is a standard outlet for generally through transfer switches and stuff like this. This is the same 30 amp outlet as we had on the AC300, great for RVs, campers, those type of things. Then if we open it up, we've got a 50 amp output. When you got your bigger class A campers and RVs and stuff, they will have a 50 amp outlet. And because this thing has a 5,000 watt inverter, it's able to offer a 50 amp outlet. So this is one of the first, I actually think it might be the first solar generator that has a 50 amp outlet. And if you're somebody that needs a 50 amp outlet, this is gonna be a unit that you're gonna to wanna to consider. So unlike every other solar generator on the market, both the AC300 and the AC500, they don't have a battery built into this. So these screens, they're dead, you can't turn them on, the power buttons, nothing happens. You need an external battery in order to turn these units on. There are some pros and some cons to that. The con being that you actually need an external battery. You need to get the cable to connect it together to turn it on. The main pro being that because they've separated the inverter and the charge controller from the battery, you're able to move it around a little bit easier. So this is already heavy with a 5,000 watt inverter in it. It's hard to move. Imagine if you had a battery built in. This would no longer be, you know, even in the realm of portability. So it's cool that they've split up the battery and I believe that's why Blue Eddy has done this. Both the AC500 and the AC300 have the exact same ports on the side. They each have two battery ports. So that's where you'll use to connect to multiple expansion batteries. Then they have the AC input, the DC input, and the communications port. All of them have nice protective covers that go over it. 
I've been using the AC300 for a while, so I've got this one ripped off and I lost that a while ago. But even your AC plugs, right? These little protective screw caps, and then you'll use the adapters that come with it. Both units each have wireless charging pads on the front, AC300 and AC500. So what I like about Blue Eddy expansion batteries is that first off you have a battery indicator on the front. You can see the green lights here indicating the percentage of battery. It goes up by 20% intervals. You can also use these batteries independently. They've got DC output ports on the front of the batteries. And potentially the most important and really cool part of these expansion batteries is that you can charge up these expansion batteries by themselves. You can get solar arrays and directly charge up the batteries independently of the main unit. That's really cool and that's gonna help with the overall recharge time of the unit, especially if you have a lot of batteries with it. Bluetti has had the same touchscreen since the AC200P. Works very well. The one thing I'll say is that in direct sun, it can sometimes get shaded, but that's pretty much the only downside of this screen I've ever seen. What's definitely different about the AC300 or the AC500, as opposed to like the AC200P, for example, are the settings. There's pages of settings, which all mean different things, and it can get a little confusing. Obviously at shopsolarkits.com, we'll help you out. We can walk you through that. Uh, at the Solar Hub, for example, we walk you through in video form every single one of the settings so you can make sure to get it right. But yeah, that's an overview of the screen. Works the exact same way as the AC300, very responsive, and I like it a lot. So that wraps up our quick overview of both of the units. Uh, they're extremely similar, really. Same footprint, different weights, couple of different ports. Um, but yeah, it will work in the same footprint if you already have a space carved out for your AC300. You can slot the AC500 into that space if you're somebody that needs to take advantage of the 50 amp outlet, for example. In the next videos, we're gonna get into a little more of the nitty gritty, some of the settings. We'll get into the cables that come with. We're gonna get into the charging specs, um, how to set up your solar panels. We'll do some capacity tests, all that good stuff. But yeah, here is the first look at the difference between the AC300 and the AC500. 500.